tricks and effects you hear now with the tape can be uh, uh, just run from a computer. You can run uh, pre-recorded recordings. You can record something that I just played and store it and play it at a later time uh, in, in the piece. You can record what I do and transform it on the fly and play it through the speakers in the hall. Um, and you can, uh, well, I said that, you can pre-record things that happen later in the piece and already have them played from the tape. So we'll, we will listen to just another piece that I'm going to play tonight. Uh, this is by Hans Tuchku. Um, it's called Zellen Linien, and you will hear that the piano plays a chord, a very loud chord, right in the beginning, and the sounds you just hear afterwards are already the sounds that are being picked up through the uh, microphone and transformed in the computer. That's the piano. And this is the electronics. Stand on this chord. The chords that you hear now have been pre-recorded. They show up later in the piece. I'm playing just this E with it. I'm playing live down here. And the chords that you hear are going to show up later in the piece. Played live, and the next one too. This one, and you hear that you hear it played backwards out of the computer, and it's getting chopped up. And in this way, I can actually start to play with myself. I start playing, I, I, it's something gets recorded and it gets played back and I play on top of it. And so we have a real interaction between the computer and the, um, and the, and the player, which we of course do not have in the tape. With all what we talked about in the tape, the tape is always very stiff and does not react to me, unlike, uh, un unlike the computer, unlike the uh, the uh, live electronics. Um, the, this piece actually, uh, the, the settings of the computer are being changed with a pedal. I have, a, uh, I have another pedal next to the three pedals that I have, and when I come to a certain point, I press the pedal, which changes the settings in the computer, and the transformation of the sound in the computer will change from that point on. And uh, I think in the piece tonight it's 31 different settings. So I press the pedal and we have another one and another one and another one. Um, but the last piece I'm going to show you, uh, that, was, uh, um, uh, that was a bit more complicated in terms of, um, of um, telling the computer what, what you should do. Um, the idea was to play along with um, we, we, had a, we had a grand piano and we had a, really, uh, a very cheap um, electro piano next to it. So as kind of a 
variety, a variant of, of the original piano sound. We had a very bad piano sound, and the original piano sound would get recorded into the computer and played back, and the bad piano would be recorded, and the sound of the piano, of the real piano, would be transformed and recorded. And to, in, in order to do all this recording and playback, I had just another keyboard. So I had two keyboards on my left side. The one keyboard was with a cheap E piano sound on the other keyboard um, uh, was just a trigger keyboard, um, which with I, 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 I tipped on the A flat and that would record, and I would uh, push the A flat that would replay, and so I had about uh, 33 triggers on this one chord too. And I would play inside the piano with all the techniques that I showed you before, like I would have a plastic ruler and I would scrape with the ruler on the strings, and on the strings there's a contact microphone which produces a very nasty sound, which we will hear uh, just in this piece, uh, which is by Martin Schüttler, it's called Venus 5, and uh, we happen to have a, a filmmaker uh, at the studio where the recording was done, and she did a film on top of the piece. Uh, the film, the movie does not really, is part of the, of the movie, is not part of the piece, but uh, since we have it, I will show you the beginning of Venus 5. Oh, I did the same thing again. Okay, I'm sorry. This is the ruler on the plastic ruler on the strings. Thank you. 
I think it was quite audible that uh, here the that got recorded and re-recorded and re-recorded on, uh, on, on different uh, keyboards and, and played back. So with uh, this technique, you can uh, you can make mind games and uh, play tricks with your uh, with what with what you hear. You never know who's playing now what and is this recorded and you can um, you can even <laughs> warp the time by playing something that's going to be played later or transform it or run it backwards in all kinds of directions. So, so much about live electronics and so much about uh, playing inside the piano and playing with tape and live electronics in general. What we now have is uh, Pierre Bloland, a composer from Stanford. And uh, what I told you earlier about uh, this little device, which is called uh, the, the EBO, uh, which uh, produces an electromagnetic field and makes the string resonate, uh, he has a uh, device which you see here and which you are going to hear tonight. And he will tell you a little bit more about this uh, once he put it inside. Um, it's actually... Um, 12 of these EBOs, um, uh, which, you, which you can see, and he, and he places them now on the computer, uh, on the computer, <laughs> inside the piano. Uh, it's, it's a very delicate operation, and he told me that I should talk to you for a minute until he's done, and uh, this is awesome. what I'm trying to do now. <laughs> Okay, hang on, I'll give you the microphone. Okay, there's, there's a stage microphone somewhere. Oh, there it is. Okay. Just see if it works. I don't want to know where it works. That's okay, that's fine. That's good. Thanks. Okay, um, so right now, uh, as you can see, well, let me, I'll, let me introduce the device a little bit. It's a rack of electromagnets. There's, there's 12 of them. And this was developed at Stanford at the um, Center for Computer Research in Music and Acoustics. It was a collaboration between myself, a composer, and two engineers who um, did most of the soldering and, and actually came up with the idea of um, the design, which is a little bit different than an EBO because I'm sending an audio signal to the magnets. So with an EBO, you, you turn it on and it resonates the string and it's fundamental. With this device, I can send um, 12 different audio signals, one to each magnet, and the string will uh, attempt to resonate at whatever frequency I'm sending it. So if I choose to send a, a C to a C string, you'll hear a C. But I can send anything at all. I can send um, all the overtones of the string and get, um, a, you know, get those frequencies back, or I can send non-pitched material, um, somebody talking, uh, anything. So what I'm going to do is demonstrate a few of these things. Um, but first, I almost forgot I have to, in order for the strings to resonate, they have to, the dampers all have to be lifted. So the damper pedal has to be down. And it's a pain to stand there on the damper pedal. So I'm going to do this. Excuse me for one second. Okay, now we are ready to go. So I've got a little demo prepared. Maybe I'll pull this one up. As I mentioned, um, the easiest thing to do is just to send the fundamental of any string to that string, and you get that frequency back. So for example, So that's a single magnet. Um, to turn, uh, just to give you an idea of the volume that it's capable of, I can, I'll turn all 12 on and we can listen to that. That's the lowest magnet. You also notice that the lowest magnet is much quieter than the highest magnet. Um, that's because the, the low strings move much more when they vibrate, so the magnet has to be further away. Plus, there's, it's, it's, a, it's a more massive string, so it's got um, more, the magnet has more work to do. Anyway. It's all 12. And I, I want to emphasize that everything you're hearing is coming from the piano, not the speakers. 
All right, and I also mentioned that the pitch doesn't have to be, um, uh, the pitch that I send does not have to be the fundamental of the string. So for example, I could, that's the second partial. And it requires a little adjustment as you get higher, but it's capable of getting pretty loud uh, once I get there. Right now I'm just changing the pitch of the signal that's being sent. There we go. So that's the sixth partial. Um, and to do that on all the strings, so um, you can play all kinds of games like that. Um, another thing, uh, well, so one of the one of the easiest ways, or the, more, the most straightforward ways to to use a device like this would be to extend the um, the ability of a piano player to do what they do already. So for example, normally one can't sustain a note on a piano forever, but with this device you can. Oh, I'm sending it the wrong fundamental. There we go. <laughs> so so if, if you imagine a piano player you know, uh, uh, pr the computer program to play, to react to the piano player, um, certain notes could be sustained for as long as the composer called for them to be sustained. Plus, the performer could have a, a pedal on stage which would allow you to do a, a single note crescendo, which normally pianos can't do. So those are some of the more straightforward, that's sort of the, um, the less exotic use of it. But as I said, um, any sound can be sent through the, the magnets. So um, I can send a single pitch that sweeps up and down. And we can hear an example of that. So what, what happened there is as the pitch swept up th through its overtones, it got you heard little pulses as it crossed an overtone, and then it, qui it was quieter um, in the spaces in between. And let's do that with, um, with all 12 magnets, just for fun. So. And that last partial's not quite coming in, but that's okay. Then back down. And it, these go pretty high. I can send, a, for example, take it up to the 10th partial. Let's see if we can get this to come in. There we go. That's sort of a little too high to be a pleasant sound. There it is. But it just gives you an idea that there's a wide range of, of pitches that, this, and that's that's on the, an F sharp string in the middle of the range of the, the piano. So, um, uh, and an interesting thing is to uh, the the way that the the strings on a piano are tuned, the the partials come in at slightly different places on each string. So, for example, as I move through, you can hear them sort of popping out in different places. This is all 12 strings. And I'm just sweeping down in pitch. So all those little scintillating sounds you hear are each string resonating, uh, each string getting slightly louder and then fading away, and then another string gets slightly louder and fades away as I sweep through. Um, let's see. So um, I did the, I showed you gl some glisses, but I can also take the pitch that I'm sending through and move it up and down um, over uh, partial. So let me do that. And let's see. Oops. Okay, there we go. 
Okay, we'll turn them. I'll turn on a single magnet first. Uh, where is it? There we go. So, so I'm just sweeping slightly above and sli slightly below the fundamental of that string. Speed that up. And turn on all mag all twelve magnets. Oops. Stop hearing the individual pulses. Um, so I, I use this type of thing in a piece, uh, with not the piece that's being performed tonight, but um, in another piece I sweep. I have a the computer set to do random movement take a single pitch and move slightly above and below it randomly. And I do that in two ways. The first way, it, move, it does it very quickly. So you hear, let's turn that off. So you hear um, kind of a shimmering sound rather than the individual pulses. And I'll play a brief example of that. So here's the, here's the quickly moving shimmering. Oh, and the, the, the other way is to move, do it very slowly um, so that you hear these distinct swells. But here's the, the fast part. You can hear it. You can hear little swells in there, but they're, they're moved by pretty quickly. And then here's the slower. It actually starts fast and slows down, so we'll hear that. And the movement is randomized, so I never know exactly when there's going to be a, a swell. Um, it just avoided one there. <laughs> So obviously this isn't time to um, exact parts of a piece, you know. Um, it just sort of appears during the course of it. There we go. I'm just waiting for one swell. Um, so that's all. This stuff is uh, sending pitch information, which I mentioned is only one of the many possibilities. I also have some examples where I send. Um, non-pitched information, for example, the sound of someone talking. And let's see, that is here. So this is a, a paragraph that is a narrator reading from Albert Camus' novel, The Plague. And you probably won't be able to understand the words, but I think it's distinctly a vocal sound coming through the piano. So, so that, that kind of thing is a little quieter. Just, um, dis discrete pitches are much louder on the piano, but, um, but at least you can hear it. And then this next example is a section of uh, a recording of a, of a composition of mine with six instruments played back through the piano. That was flute and clarinet, and that's cello. So anyway, that, that's just a few of the, the basic things that you can do with that. One, one thing that I haven't experimented too much with is some of the stuff that Sebastian was talking about, where um, you can just turn a magnet on and let the string resonate, and then reach inside and manipulate the string in various
this way is, um, he doesn't like coins, but I, I find them to be effective. I won't scrape, I'll just touch it, so. So that, that kind of sound, you can get a, a much wider variety of sounds by reaching in and, oops, um, doing that kind of thing. So that's just a brief example of some of the things. Um, if you come to the concert tonight, you'll hear how a, a pianist such as Sebastian uh, interacts with the, with the magnets in a live setting. Um, he, is, he does use a, a, a pedal to, to trigger different uh, presets on the computer and move through a, a cycle of uh, uh, different sound, sound types to, uh, as the piece progresses. So anyway, that's, that's my little demonstration, and uh, thank you for listening. <laughs>